This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee. Rumor has it. On the Breakfast Club. So listen up. On TikTok, a woman by the name of Anessa Rossi was doing her makeup and recalling an instance with Kanye West when he came by the strip club, ordered some ice water, and then proceeded to talk to her. She's a strip club bartender, and he didn't want to get any lap dances. He wasn't uh, interested in anything of that sort. He wasn't drinking. Here's what happened. I bartended at a strip club in downtown LA and Kanye came in. Kanye didn't want to book a table. Kanye didn't want to see the girls dance. He just came straight to the bar and started talking to me. He didn't order anything to drink. He just got water on the rocks and proceeded to tell me all of his beliefs and where we descended from and how he believed that he was a true descendant of his creator. His conversation went on with me for about three to four hours and he told me at the end of the night, thank you for my time, gave me $15,000 and said that he felt he was called to do this and left. That's the last time I've ever seen him. There was um, right, some... there was nothing exciting about that story. Nothing at all. <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's the story you tell your friends and it's cool. Like, oh, you met Kanye, but I thought she was about to tell us she saw Kanye saving a dog from a bear or something. Like that was what? It's just a random story to tip somebody fifteen thousand dollars just talking to them and he felt like it was his calling, especially in the strip club. Oh, you know how they say part. some guys just go to the strip club? Yeah, she said she's a strip club bartender. Mm, yeah. He didn't want to see the girls dance. But you know a lot of people don't go to the strip club for the strippers a lot of times. They go for the bartenders. They'll sit there and they'll talk to the bartenders all night. A lot of times strippers are mad at the bartenders because the bartenders make more than the strippers. By the way, Kanye had a reason to be there. We just don't know what it is. And neither does she. He didn't just randomly walk in there. That nah, could have been a vibe. Order water and, and give her 15000 yeah, he, he came there for a reason. We just don't know what it is. And that's fine. And that's shout, a, shout that's a great night. Too. You just talk to Kanye and make $15,000? No, it's well, not. Kanye is installments. very exhausting. Yes, you should. Kanye should be paying somebody $15,000. <laughs> <That, laughs> All right. Yeah, I was saying, yeah, shout to Starlet. Starlet's is back open. They've been closed for like 16 months. They, they back open yesterday. Just want to throw that out. All right, now let's talk about these Mamba Sita sneakers. Vanessa Prine is not happy that somebody has their hands on these sneakers that she decided not to sell. Now she said it was called the Mamba Sita shoe as an exclusive black and white colorway on her daddy's shoes. I picked the colors in honor of her uniform. The number two she wore just like her uniform, the inside pattern. Kobe and Gigi on the back in gold instead of Kobe's signature, the inside shoe details, everything. And she said it's not approved for sale. She wanted it to be sold to honor her daughter with all of the proceeds benefiting the Mamba, Mamba, Mamba Sita Sports Foundation, but she did not end up re-signing the Nike contract. We discussed that earlier and decided not to sell the shoes. These shoes were not approved to be made in the first place, but somehow somebody has a pair of these shoes and they posted them on Instagram. So she said it appears someone already has the shoe in their possession. If someone can share how they have these shoes, that would be great because my daughters and I don't have any of Gigi's Mamba Sita shoes. Mm-hmm. So if you happen to see those, they were not approved to be made at all. All right, now a spokesperson for Bill Cosby is responding to what O.J. Simpson had to say. Now, earlier, we discovered that Bill Cosby had the opportunity to be eligible for parole if he had entered a therapy program for sexually violent predators. Bill Cosby did decline that chance because he felt it would have been an admission of guilt. Well, O.J. Simpson actually chimed in on the scenario and felt like Bill Cosby should have taken that deal. Here's what he said. Bill Cosby decided not to take a course a uh, sexual course in prison, and it probably cost him his parole. Um, so he's not getting out. Well, when I was in camp, I, I took anything, all the courses. I wanted to get home to my kids. I took a victim impact course that was particularly galling to me because I had to get up and apologize to my victims. And I got up and said, guys, I'm sorry I caught you trying to sell my stolen property. I'm sorry I yelled at you, and I'm sorry that the state of California ruled it was my property, gave it back to me, and you didn't get to make any money off my stolen property. <laughs> Why does it feel like O.J. Simpson speaks his own language, but somehow we all understand him? <laughs> that's, that's what it sounds like. That's what it is. Well, Bill Cosby's spokesperson responded to what O.J. Simpson had to say. Andrew Wyatt issued a statement via the Shade Room and said that if Cosby had taken the opportunity for parole, he would have been admitting that he's guilty of a crime without the sheer evidence of any proof. Just she said it happened. And then he said Mr. Simpson was caught trying to retrieve his stolen items unlawfully, which is the difference. Mr. Cosby has never admitted, nor has any evidence been presented to prove that Mr. Cosby drugged and or raped women. Why would Mr. Cosby accept parole when we are waiting for the PA State Supreme Court to issue a ruling any day now on Mr. Cosby's appeal? We are hoping they would vacate his conviction or warrant him a new trial. Mr. Simpson, being paroled is like being on a slave plantation. You are never free and you will always be the property of your oppressor. Enjoy your golf game. And what OJ is saying, it doesn't matter. He just wanted to get home. 
So he was willing to do whatever mm-hmm. program or make whatever admissions he wanted to make in order to get home. Correct. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, Jay Prince is issuing a call for action after his nephew was murdered. Here's what he had to say. Houston, we have a problem to solve. There are a few renegade young punks who went into one of my boys' garage and shot my unarmed nephew in his heart Mm. and killed him. These clowns have no principles, when an anybody can get it type of attitude. To all the real ones in every hood in H-Town, let's not wait on the police to solve every problem for us. We have legal rights that need to be exercised to protect. Now, there is a call to action here. I have no respect for you around the world that call yourselves gangsters, killing unarmed innocent people at nightclubs, homes, schools, malls, restaurants, churches, or wherever. This is weak not gangster. Real around the world, we need to come together to deal with these bad apples. I wish immediate karma to all that intentionally kill innocent people. Reap what you sow. This is not the call of duty. War zone. Game. This is real life. Yeah, condolences to Jay Prince and his family, Absolutely. sending his family healing energy. I don't see how you could disagree with anything that he just said. And if I was those guys in Houston uh, who murdered what, what Jay Prince's nephew, yes, you, mm-hmm. you, you might as well turn yourself in. I'd rather get caught by the police than have Jay Prince right. them on my ass. Well, I hope they do find out who, who did that. All right, well, that is your rumor report. I'm Angela Yee. All right, thank you, Miss Yee. All right, up next is the People's Choice Mix. Get your request in. Um, Revolt is off this week, so we'll see them next week. And don't forget, um, my call show, July 3rd, we have a month left. So if you haven't got your tickets, get your tickets. Uh, we got so many cool surprises. Uh, we actually got a monster truck. If you were uh, growing up, you used to watch the monster trucks come through, or if you're a kid and you love monster trucks, we're going to have an actual monster truck at the show, which is going to be pretty cool. So you get to be up close and personal, take pictures and all that stuff. So we're adding so many cool things. I'll tell you about 2 chains is Tank. So we're going to have a tank. We got a lot of cool stuff, man. There's going to be a lot of cool car shows. And, of course, it's Carcella. So we're doing one in Atlanta, July 3rd, and August 14th if you're on the East Coast, Philly, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Boston. Or if you just want to drive up, get your tickets. We appreciate you. We're going to have it's. It's overwhelming, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm so excited about it. All right? Mix is up next. Let's go. 